Our main debate here in Strasbourg this week has almost certainly been the report of a committee that we set up to look into climate change. It's just an interim report and what it does is summarize all of the science we have available. What I found interesting in the debate is that everybody now shares the urgency of tackling climate change. I say everybody, a few fringe voices still deny that it's happening. But the vast majority recognize that unless we do something very urgent, and unless we cut our greenhouse gas, gas emissions, probably by more than the 20% uh, being advised by the European Commission, we will simply push our planet past a tipping point from which there is no return. We have absolutely to adopt a package of measures to combat climate change in the next year. We have to go into the world conferences in Poznan and in Copenhagen and persuade America and China and other countries to do the same. And most importantly, I think, we should be looking in great detail at this desert tech idea, the idea that you can generate enough high voltage solar thermal power from 130 square kilometers of North African desert to provide for all the power needs of Europe and the Middle East and North Africa and desalinate water at the same time. That's the kind of project which might allow us to make the switch from oil effectively and allow us to continue lifestyles where we can keep leaving the lights switched on. The other issue that we've looked at this week is the possibility of putting a law through at European level uh, covering discrimination at work. We currently have a law prohibiting discrimination on grounds of race or ethnicity, but we've no law prohibiting discrimination on grounds of age or of disability or of religion or of sexual orientation. And my colleague Liz Lynn piloted a measure through the House which calls for precisely such a law. And I hope the European Commission will take it and turn it round into the form of a directive which can come back and go on to the statute book to make sure that all Europeans benefit from the legal protection they should have at work. And finally, but by certainly by no means least, the situation in Italy. Sadly, there were last weekend, and indeed over the course of the last week, a number of attacks on gypsy communities in Italy. There are many immigrants in Italy, as there are in many of our countries, and occasionally, as in every country, there is violence towards them. What happened in Italy, I think, was unusual because of the level of violence. Unusual because of the way in Naples, the mob, possibly organized by the Mafia, was going in and literally forcibly ejecting people from their makeshift homes by setting them alight and refusing to allow the fire service to go in and put out the fires. Whereas in Rome, you had a police operation going and rounding up 400 people, allegedly uh, illegal settlers, and expelling 118 of them pretty much straight away. We have to be very, very careful in the European Union that we don't carry out the kind of purges against the Roma community and other immigrants that became a feature of Nazi Germany. I'm not suggesting one can draw an immediate parallel with Italy, but I am worried that they had an election campaign which created a kind of climate of impunity to people who wanted to carry out violence against immigrants. And I think it's important that the Italian government together with other governments, look seriously at the problem and at what can be done to integrate better people who have a legal right to be where they are and to make sure that those who do not are appropriately removed. Those have been the main items on our agenda here in the European Parliament in Strasbourg. If you have any questions, anything I can uh, provide you with more, please get in touch via our website. And uh, I hope I may welcome you back again to my video blog next week.